as we said before, to include a period covered by an option in the lease term, two conditions should be met. First, the lease should be enforceable during that period. And second, there must be a reasonable certainty that the lessee will exercise the lease extension option, or not exercise the lease termination option. Let us talk about the first condition. The lease is enforceable when both the lessee and the lessor must agree to terminate the lease. No party can terminate the lease without the approval of the other party. If one party can terminate the lease without the consent of the other party, and without a significant penalty, then the lease is not enforceable. The penalty can be an amount that is payable on the termination of the lease, or it can be broader than that, for example, a significant leasehold improvement undertaken by the lessee to the leased asset that will be lost, if the lessee chooses to terminate the lease. Note that both the lessee and the lessor, can have the right to terminate the lease agreement without the consent of the other party, but there is a difference between these rights. The lessee's right to terminate the lease without the consent of the lessor is an option available to the lessee, that should be considered when determining the lease term. But on the other side, the lessor's right to terminate the lease without the consent of the lessee, is ignored when assessing the lease term. Let us make this more clear with an example. Assume we have a contract for five years between a lessor and a lessee. Each of the lessor and the lessee cannot terminate the contract, during the first three years, unless both of them agree. The contract gives the lessee the right to terminate the lease after the first three years. Here, the first three years of the contract is the non-cancellable period of the lease, as neither party can terminate the contract, during the three years, unless both of them agree. Therefore, the lease is enforceable during the first three years of the contract. The contract also gave the lessee the option to terminate the lease after the first three years. If the lessor can decline the lessee's request to terminate the contract, this means that the lessee is forced to complete the agreement for the remaining two years in the contract. In other words, the lease is enforceable for the full five years, the non-cancellable period of three years plus the two years of the optional period. However, if the lessor cannot prevent the lessee from terminating the lease, then the lease is enforceable only for the first three years of the contract, and not enforceable during the two years of the optional period. Let's assume in our example that the lessor and not the lessee, has the right to terminate the lease after the first three years. Well, things are different here. Although the lessor has the right to terminate the lease after the first three years without the lessee's consent, the lease is still considered enforceable from the perspective of the lessee for the whole contract period of five years. This is because the lessee has an unconditional obligation to pay the lease payments for the whole five years, including the remaining two years of the optional period, unless the lessor chooses early termination of the lease. So here, the lessor's right to terminate the lease is ignored, and the contract is enforceable for the full five years from the perspective of the lessee. That is all about the first condition that should be met to include an optional period in the lease term. Now let's move to the second condition.